Hello there everyone and welcome to a new review on the channel and today we're looking at a magic book and that is The Psychology of Magic from Lab to Stage by Alice Pilas and Gustav Kuhn. This is a very good book, a very interesting one that I've read from cover to cover. I've enjoyed it. I know it's not a book based on tricks, it's based more on the psychology, it's very scientific. But I really do want to make this review out there for some people that I think are going to benefit from this a lot and a lot and are going to get so much information of this. So I want to make this review. It's going to be unconditional because since there's no tricks in this book, I can't do my normal way. So we're just going to talk a bit about it, give you an insight of what this is, why I like it so much and why I think you should read it. And also because this is going to set the stage for my next two reviews that are coming up on the channel, which are going to be based on forcing and self-working mental tricks, which is what they discuss a lot in this book. So yeah, let's roll the intro and get straight into it. Perfect, so you decide to stick around, which means you want to learn more about the psychology of magic. So what is the psychology of magic? It's essentially a book based on <laughs> The psychology of magic? No. Okay, yes, but no. It's essentially a book that unpacks every single facet of what goes into a mentalism or magic trick and unpacks it in a way to tell you why certain things work, how they work, how you can use certain principles to make your effects better, how you can use the way the brain works to enhance certain effects. So it's a very scientific book. They even tell this to you from the start. They tell you, you know, this is a heavy book. Don't read it nonstop because you're just going to forget everything. You're not going to internalize the information. It's a very heavy book. It's a lot of tests, a lot of psychology. The language on it is also a bit more complicated. So this is not a book that you're just going to open and be like, okay, I'm going to read through this from start to finish because it's a very enjoyable, funny book. This is a book that you have to digest. You're going to have to take your time with. As I did, it took me around two and a half weeks to really finish it because I didn't want to rush through it. It takes me a long time to digest magic books because I'm a very visual learner. Even though I work a lot in the field where I have to read a lot of books, especially books like these, when it comes to magic, I really want to get my money's worth because magic books are not expensive, are not, a, are not cheap, I mean. So I really want to digest them and get every single nugget of information that I can, which is why this review is coming a bit late compared to others. But yeah, this is essentially what this book is. So I'll give you the table of contents as I do with most of my magic books before we move into the rest. So this has a few chapters. It has an introduction. It has the first kind of chapter is the science of magic, where they essentially talk about magic, how it got created, their interpretation of it, etc. Then you have magic theory. So they're going to talk about the main concepts of magic. They're going to define it. They're going to explain it to you to them. Then they're going to talk about blind spots and how to exploit them. So this is the way that we use a lot of principles in our magic to kind of make the spectre kind of misdirection principles and how we make a spectre look a certain way or interpret certain things differently. They're going to give you insights about that. Then you have visual illusions. So those are for more stage acts or for things like lapping, or if you want to do maybe a misdirection thing where you have something here, but you're doing something with your other hand, how to misdirect that and why that works or why it doesn't work. They're going to talk about, talk about that. Then memory illusions. So that is effect where we kind of fake recap things to our spectator and we tell them, you shuffle the cards, yes? And they're going to tell you yes. And that's essentially a memory illusion because they haven't shuffled the cards. They just push them together. But in their mind, they're going to forget that aspect in the routine. So they're going to talk about that. Then they're going to talk about decision forces, different types of forces, why they work, why they don't work, why some are better, why some that are kind of not really used are better than some of the main ones used. Then they're going to talk about outcome forces as well. Then framing magic, which is very good. This is very good. The framing magic section of this is impeccable. It talks about how a mentalist frames things, how a magician frames things, and how a more spiritual magician, kind of Louis Laval is the first person that comes to my mind, kind of a spiritual magician frames his magic and how this differs from a point to point and how all of the activities that they talked about before influence the framing that you should use. And then they talk about why do we enjoy magic as a spectator, why we believe our spectators enjoy magic and why spectators actually enjoy magic themselves. And then a conclusion, and it's all packed in a hardback book that looks very nice, as always with Vanishing Ink. The pages are 
very thick they're very nice the images and everything are very nice the print is great as well it is very quality so again where do you buy this how much does it cost and what do you get you can buy this from vanishing ink or any other retailer it is shipped through i got mine from alakazam magic it costs i believe 49 us dollars which is around 65 canadian and what you get is the book so now that we've talked about this is kind of the time where I'm just going to riff raff a bit about the book, tell you why I liked it, what I found from it, and what I think is worth and why I think this book is really different to most other books on magic theory out there. To start, the reason I really like this book is the approach that they have in explaining things. It's a very scientific approach, so they're going to have a lot of tests, they've run a lot of tests with people, They've run tests on magicians, they've run tests on lay people, tests on people a bit familiar with magic, and they've tested a lot of different things and a lot of conceptions and misconceptions that we have on magic and a lot of debates. The recurring theme or the recurring trick that they usually come back to in a lot of tests is the crosscut force. And that is one of the most debated forces in magic, right? For a mentalist, it's the holy grail, one of the best forces because of how nonchalant it is. For a magician, a lot of people are going to tell you, oh, I'd rather do this really fancy classic force with a double turnover, etc. And what they found, a lot of the findings that they get here are going to surprise a few people. And the test of the crosscut force is no different. They've tested the crosscut force against some of the best forces that you can do, some of the most technical forces. And they found that people find the crosscut force the most deceptive and the most kind of nonchalant and the most inconspicuous. So that is something very interesting as well. They've done that with also difficulty. They've done really difficult sleight of hand heavy tricks to people and very mundane, boring tricks to people. And the findings are that the people had the same reactions to the tricks that we perceive as boring and mundane, the exact same as the over the top, slight, heavy, incredibly challenging tricks that maybe only one out of 10 magicians could do. The spectators had the same reaction and the same interpretations. There was a bit of a slight difference, right? But in the end, it was the same. So there's things that they talk about language. Language can elevate the most mundane of tricks to the most impossible trick. And the most hard to achieve trick without good language and without good framing is going to be even less interesting than a crosscut force reveal of a card. So there's a lot of findings, a lot of information here that I think is going to change the way that you perceive your magic, change the way that you perceive certain things that you do. And I feel it is really, really great. It's also full of little ideas, presentational hooks. A lot of the tests that they do, you could kind of talk about. I had a conversation with someone on YouTube in one of my past videos where we talked about the video of the gorilla walking among the people while you count them because this is something that they reference and that became a hook for one of my tricks. It became the hook for will to read for the first part of the effect that became my hook is extremely interesting as a presentational standpoint in my opinion. So that's what I use as well. So this book not only can give you kind of insights, but it's going to challenge the way that you look at magic, you approach magic and the way you interpret your things. And I also think it's going to challenge the way you kind of set up your shows and the way that you set up the tricks in it based on the blind spots and everything that they identify because they identify certain things that can work really well into conjunction. For example, they tell you that having a trick or a set of tricks where you always use the same set of misdirection, we all know this as magician, it primes your audience. But sometimes when you do your set list of effects, you don't realize you're doing the exact same move because you've become blind to it as a magician. You've practiced it so much and you do it in so many routines, you don't realize you're doing it. They talk about the classic as well, blinking when you do something. I was guilty of that, and I still have in certain in instances. A lot of the times, I blink when I do something that is a misdirection, right? A lot of times when I, when I see myself on camera do the pass, I do it without even realizing mentally that I'm doing it. I would be like, can you do this? And I blink when I ask them to, when I point or I do a top chain, sometimes I'm like, can you hold up your hand? And I blink when I do it because it's unintentional, right? I've primed myself to that. And sometimes people are going to pick up on those. So you have to let go of those habits. You're going to have to identify those habits. And they talk about all of this in the book. And that's why I really like it. I think it's different to magic theory where they say you should approach this this way, should approach this this way. This is more ground-based approaches. You may agree with it, you may not, right? It's opinionated. 
their findings aren't necessarily going to change the entire way you perform your set or you approach magic. Maybe you're going to be like, they're wrong. Maybe the subjects that they did the tricks for are not the subjects that I perform to. Why should I change myself? I don't care. And that is fine. But just the fact you acknowledge what they give you here is important. And I think it is very interesting to do that. So yeah, this is going to be a very short review. There's, I don't want to bore you with this. It's very, it's a very hefty book. I don't want to give you everything in it as well, right? I'm not here to do you a page by page, chapter by chapter rundown of everything that they explain because you should read this in my opinion. So now we're just going to move into the positives and negatives. So what are the negatives of this book? The only negative that I can find is if you do not like reading or you do not like reading academic stuff, this is based as an academic book. So if you're familiar with the books that you have, like peer reviewed articles, peer reviewed journals, peer reviewed books, then you're going to be fine with this. But if you wanted something more like hearted or you don't like to read, especially heavy kind of university type level material, this is maybe going to be hard for you to read and is going to be challenging for you to read. For me, this is what I read on a daily basis due to my job, due to being a teacher, due to being a full-time student as well. This is my wheelhouse. This is what I have to do every single day to prepare for my classes, to prepare my own courses for my students. This is what I have to do. So for me, this is within my wheelhouse, but I know that for some people, this may not be pleasant for them to read because of how it is designed. But apart from that, what are the positives? One, the book is beautifully produced. It's engaging. It's interesting. The tests are great. Yes, you're not going to learn a single trick in this book, but you're going to learn how to make your tricks better, how to make your forces better, how to interpret your magic better, how to frame your magic better, how to learn how to be a better magician, how to interact with your spectators, how to exploit your spectators, right? I know this is not something that you would normally say, but learning where you could exploit or abuse their senses in your own benefit is something that you're going to learn to do as well with this book. So I heavily recommend this book. So if I were to recommend it, would I? Yes. I think if you want to push yourself a bit, I think this is a very interesting book to have and a very enriching one to learn and see where you stand on a few things. Maybe the crosscut force, you've abandoned it because you were, everyone told you, oh, if you do the cross crosscut force, you're just a beginner. You're just a, you know, you're a, a small kid. You're just doing the boring stuff because you don't have the time to learn the more intricate stuff. Well, maybe this book is going to bring you back to your crosscut force that people bullied you out of because it shows that according to like a thousand lay people, the crosscut force is as good as the classic force. And I mean, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, maybe you'll go back to that. Maybe it's going to change the way. Maybe you're going to simplify certain things now, right? There's a lot of tricks that I do with, which have a lot of hard moves and sometimes just simplify them, make them easier, make them more grounded. And this book kind of proves that whether a trick is super simple or super hard, your spectator does not give YouTube, I hope this is allowed, does not give a shit. He does not care whether you are doing 10 passes, two double lifts, two bottom deals. And if the other person is just doing this, cross cut force, look at me, you're going to look at this card, can you remember it? Think of the color, think of this, this, and you reveal it. The tricks by the spectators are, for some of them, are going to be the exact same. So, yeah. Take your time, read through it. I fully recommend it. I'm going to give this a 9.5 on 10. I think it is absolutely great. Fully recommend it. Gets my stamp of approval. So again, if you want to talk about it, leave comments down below. I'd be more than willing. If not, I'll see you in my next reviews, which are going to be two of uh, Chris Wordle's books on forcing and mental kind of self-working tricks, which are a big topic of this book. So I feel these next three reviews that I'm going to do are going to flow extremely well into each other and are going to be extremely potent to have back to back. So see you in those. Have a great one. And bye -bye.